Today on Fast Friday, I'm gonna give you five tips for using your new Fujifilm GFX 100S camera. Here's the problem though. I actually don't own a GFX 100S. Fuji had loaned me one earlier this week, but I had to box it up and send it back. However, my Fujibot assistant has not yet left for the post office. Uh, Fujibot, would you please come in here, Fujibot? Ah, uh, Fujibot, yes, come in here please. Put the box down, thank you. Okay, the GFX should be in here um, somewhere. Where did you pack it? Oh, wait, hold on a second. Okay, wait, Fujibot, Fujibot, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Okay, excellent, thank you very much, Fujibot. You are all done, you may leave, please, thank you. You can leave, exit, goodbye. Um, uh, ah, sayonara. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to Palta Tech. Today we're talking about setting up a brand new GFX 100S camera for new users. If you've not yet seen my review on this camera, be sure to click on the link below as I go into lots of detail on how this camera works as well as shooting in medium format in general. Now my first tip is designed to save you file space when shooting those large medium format RAW files. And that is to set your RAW recording to lossless 16 bit. The camera offers several different raw compression options, and if you choose uncompressed 16-bit, each raw file will be around 208 megabytes. However, if you set your raw compression to 16-bit lossless, each raw file now is only 140 megabytes. This is quite a savings, and technically lossless compressed is lossless, right? I mean, meaning you should lose no quality whatsoever with your raw file, but you'll have a much smaller file size. And this will allow you to get more shots on your SD card. Now be sure to check that your specific editing software does support lossless compressed Fujifilm RAW files. Photoshop, Lightroom, Capture One, they all do. So if you use those, you're fine. For my next tip, if you have a GF lens with a C marker on the aperture ring, you see that right there? You might want to consider using it, particularly if you're coming into the Fujifilm GFX system from a different camera brand. What it allows you to do is transfer control of the aperture ring to your front command dial, and you can use that to set the aperture if you prefer. Simply rotate the lens aperture ring and set it to C. Once you have it in C, simply press in on the front command dial like this, boom, like that. Don't long press it. If you long press it, right, and hold it in, you're gonna see this appear. That's the menu, you don't wanna see that. So don't long press it. Instead, press it quickly once, like this, boom. Look at that, see that? When you do, it'll toggle from F to ISO. F to ISO, you see that? F stop to ISO. So when it's in F stop, now you can rotate your command dial and look at how the aperture is changing. Do you see that there? My third tip has to do with power settings. If you go into the wrench, into power management, you're probably familiar with auto power off, and that will turn off the camera after a set time period to save battery life. Once it does that, it sometimes takes a second to get it back on. So let's say you have it set for two minutes, the camera shuts off after two minutes, and then you tap the shutter release, the camera has to kind of turn itself back on. And that extra little bit of time might be too much and you may miss a shot. So instead of using auto power off, I turn that to off and I turn shooting standby mode on, okay? And what that does is that puts it in a standby mode. It's still drawing a little bit of power, but it's much faster to come back to life when you need to continue shooting. And it's perfect for that kind of shooting situation where you're taking a few shots and then there's a pause for a bit. And then you need to grab a few more shots quickly and then there's a pause for a bit. It's perfect for that. I'll set it for 15 seconds. Okay, waiting, waiting for it to turn off. Okay, so it just went into standby mode. In other words, it's kind of sleeping, but it's not off. Now, all I have to do to turn it back on, watch how fast it'll come back on. Boom, look at that. 
immediately. It's a really nice feature I love about the GFX. Number four's tip has to do with a video setting that I think is kind of important. If you go into your audio settings, you'll notice that by default, it is set to zero decibels for both the internal and the external mic. And inside that, it's set to manual. The problem with it being set to manual is that for most beginners on this camera, you may end up clipping your audio if you're not careful. What I recommend you do is at least set the internal one so that it's set to automatic, right? Just like that. This way the camera will control the audio levels automatically a little better and it may save your audio from clipping. Obviously, if you're using an external microphone, you're gonna wanna put it in manual and check your audio settings before you start shooting. But for a lot of run and gun situations where you may be using the built-in mic, it may be better and more effective to set it to auto. And my last tip has to do with ergonomics. You'll notice that on the GFX 100S, they have the exposure compensation button right here. Now, when you first get your camera under the default settings, you'll notice that to change the exposure compensation, you have to hold down this button while at the same time rotating the rear command dial. Now, depending upon your shooting needs, that could be a hassle, right? Having to kind of hold it down with this finger while at the same time press it in here while you're trying to do other, eh. If you go to the menu and you go into button dial setting, there is a wonderful option right here. Exposure compensation button setting. You see that? And you can change it from on when pressing. That's the press at the same time while trying to turn way of doing it. You can change it from that to on off switch. Now it's more like a toggle switch. You press it once, boom, and now you can rotate just like this. So you could be out shooting and just rotating and not having to press and hold that in to activate it. I don't know about you, but I find that a much better way of using the exposure comp button. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. Next week, I will be returning to the X-T3, the X-T4, and so forth. So I have closed out my week with the GFX 100S, and I am going to be signing off now. Have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you in another video next week. Take care. Fujibot, 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 got it. Okay. <laughs> I'll do this again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do it again. Sorry. Yeah, Not so much peanuts. Warm.